Today's sales leaders face a difficult task, selling the right products at the right time through the right channels. A new three-day program from Harvard Business School Executive Education addresses this problem directly. Join us on the Boston campus in August for Managing Sales Teams and Distribution Channels, where you will discover strategies that can lead to the best sales performance. Learn more by clicking the banner or visiting hbs.me slash sales. That's hbs.me slash sales. All right, good morning, guys. I'm Apostle Charles Ellis here at Harvest Noir Church. You know, it's 18 LC Studios here in the city of Dallas. We're going to get started on actually Psalms Report. This is a 547th Psalm Report. Might be a little longer than that. We need more than that. But the interesting track we kept up with since 2006, I think it's a legitimate word to come forth every morning here at 18 LC Studios. Something very strong to help the day get started as we continue to put ourselves in position to thank God for waking us up and seeing a day which we have never seen before. It's like a newborn baby. Waking up out of the, just coming out of the mother's canal, you know, we're just, um, uh, just waking up and we're thanking God for a day which we've never seen before. We're going to the presence of just thanking God for this day, strapping ourselves with the armor, which is the word of God. And what your ritual may be when you get up every morning, reading the scriptures, whether you wake up four in the morning, five in the morning, you begin to give God the Shabbatum that he needs or the praise or the worship in the midst of that process and know that he gave you the opportunity to get up and see another day which we've never seen before. But like I say, once again, it's a blessing for you guys to join me here at HNLC Studios International here in the city of Dallas. We're going to get started on this Psalms report. We're going to be talking over that book of Psalms chapter 115. Get yourself together. We're going to actually get the music let us kind of solidify itself a little bit. We're going to come right back and we're going to open in prayer. We're going to hear what the word of God is always saying that's coming from the kingdom of God. Father God, we thank you, we bless you, we are only for this opportunity, Father God, to come for your throne once again. To hear what you have to bring that's coming from the kingdom of God. Lord, I'm asking you to solidify my mind through the spirit. Now, Father God, when I come before you, Father God, it only not be a conduit, but Father God, I let you use me in the way you need to use me. That I be that master to bring the word into the land to your people in a way that be benefiting to them to help them to move forward. Lord, whatever proclivity they may be going through, whatever subvert, whatever problem, whatever circumstance, whatever situation it may be, Father God, we believe and declare and decree. According to the word of God in Isaiah 54 and 17, that is not a weapon. It can't be designed. It never could be engineered. 
Because we know our safety is with you, Father God, from above all princes and power and dominion, not only named in this world. Father God, we believe and declare and decree. You gave us a Jeremiah 29, 11, and our future is protected. Known to you, Father God, there's nothing too hard for you to do. And Father God, I thank you this morning for giving me the opportunity to have the tree of life. In the midst of having the opportunity to have the tree of life, Father God, I thank you for all my listeners, all those who are not listening, all those who are newcomers that are coming on board. We had 47 to come on board, Lord, and I thank you for each and every one of them to come a part of the very listening crew to help the ministry to move forth as they continue to declare and decree and speak over the service that it may be a benefit to them, to help them, and whatever it may be that's going on in their life. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I'm now just, I just decree it and I declare it. That means I got the power, according to Romans 4, 17, to call things. Now that I have willed myself over to you, Father, God, use this vessel in whatever way you see fit to come forth and do what you declared it to do. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray, Lord, amen. It's <clears throat> sort of always an opportunity, you know, whether it's kind of back and forth here in the DFW Metroplex. But other than that, God is always good. We had our actually... Um, Acceleration service is going to be coming up on this particular weekend. We have moved that particular acceleration service till the 29th, which is the end of the month. Normally, uh, because of the hotel's activities, they had some things that took place, and we was kind of bumped a little bit, but we were bumped back to where we normally should be. And normally, we have our services on the fourth end of, on the first and the fourth Sunday, excuse me, of here at HNLC, uh, HNLC Studios in the city of uh Addison, Texas, and we want you guys to continue to stay in tune. If you're in the DFW Metroplex or you're coming in out of town, shoot me a text, shoot me some information, maybe an email or something. Let me, hey, uh, Apostle, we're in town. We'd love to come across and enjoy you, uh, enjoy you with, uh, enjoy you in your services. Uh, we know it's, uh, it's always a powerful service. It's always a relevant word that's coming from the kingdom, even as right now when we speak and we talk about the process of the kingdom of God and the work he's called us to do in this season that we're in. <clears throat> Let's get into the word and see what the word of God is speaking here. According to the, the uh, area of Psalms 115, if you want to turn your Bibles over to uh, Psalms 115, let's get in here what the Word of God is declaring over here in this particular scripture, dealing with the process of um, the power move and how we as men and women of God speak things, not of ourselves, but through the power of God. We're going to work out a few different translations uh, this morning. We're going to look at the Amplified. You know, we're going to look at, look at the King James Version, first of all, common English. And of course, you know, I'm going to run over to the, uh, what you call the Derby Translation. I mean, it's many different uh, areas of scripture I read from. Yeah, I, I might choose whatever the category fits, because what we want to do, we usually go to these different commentaries. You know, the Word of God talks about the process. Um, it's not that, you know, this is, this is uh, well, well, we know scripture is fact. But we look at commentary that's information that's broke down from men who observe in the history, studies, and teachings. Um, uh, to give you a little bit more insight and understanding about that particular event in that particular chapter. Let's make it understood. Now, that's not scripture. The Word of God declares when we look at the very verses in which we have, which is called the Holy Bible, the Bible talks about the Deuteronomy 29 and 29, the secret things. There are things that man can't teach you. Their writing give information about their historical events on that particular chapter, that particular event, or whatever it may be. But it's only historical writing from what man has given you. Let me make it real clear to you. The Word of God declares according to 1 Corinthians. You read over 1 Corinthians, you take your Bible, look over there, you look over in the process of the Scripture. It tells you 1 Corinthians in that particular second chapter, in that particular uh, ninth, 10th, and 11th verse, when you just look at the ninth verse, it makes a very strong illustration. That's made me kind of, I um, mean, I like to quote it off the top of my head, which is good, but you know, you got to be, you know, studying and showing yourself approval is always great because you never know when the revelation of God is pulling something out of you. And they want you to be that puzzle to fit in that particular atmosphere or that event during the course of time when something is taking place. You want to know what a Holy, what a Holy Spirit is strategically uh, placing you during the course of that time. Let's look up in the second chapter and let's get a little bit. We're going to stay in Psalms uh, 115, but I want to set a basis, a little foundation here to get you to understand when we talk about different commentaries. You see me going to different commentaries, this, that, and the other. But the commentaries is only information to give you what that particular man, the doctor, whatever he called himself, professor, has studied in, uh, about that particular. Um, uh, event during that course of time. But the Word of God makes it very clear when you compare this particular area over in 2 Corinthians. 
in that particular area of the ninth verse. And the word of God declares right here in the position that we're speaking in the ninth verse. He says, but it has been written that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Let's look what it says. I'm get ahead of it. It sounds like a really uh, nice scripture to roll off your lips, but it's really saying something right here. But eyes have not seen, and ears have not heard. It had not entered to the heart of any man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Now, I want you to stay right there. I want you to stay right there, and I want to give you just some solid information in terms of how the word of God declares and decrees that what you receive comes through the Holy Spirit. It's going to go back over to the book of 2 Corinthians. I'm going to get there. I'm, uh, 1 Corinthians, I'm going to get there. But I want to show you something over here in the area of the book of Deuteronomy. Go to the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, just want to lay a foundation. I like to build a house. I like to set on stuff. Uh, I can't do shotgun preaching. You know, every week you have something different you're going to preach. You, you, you got to be able to get all you can out of whatever it is that you're teaching on. So the people get a solid and good understanding. That's what I like about Dr. J.C. Matthews. He's a serious teacher. And that's what we all should be, serious teacher, to understand that um, that God wants to get uh, sound solidification. Not but what we feel about a certain event that goes on around us and then something sounds kind of tingling to our ears and we say that's a revelation. And then we go all talking about that a preach. I mean, well, God didn't come to do that either. And the Bible said he came because the kingdom of God is at hand. He didn't come to, he didn't come to preach the gospel. He came to, de to declare the kingdom of God. We look over here in the book of Deuteronomy 29 and 29, but you go to the particular 28th verse. He said, in the root, he said, Lord rooted out of there the land in anger and the wrath and a great indignation and cast them into another land as it uh, as it is this day. But listen to what it says over here. You got to read this whole scripture over and over again. You know, talk about go you know, to 26th verse, but we'll, we'll, we, we're we going to get there. Matter of fact, let's go ahead into the 26th verse and let's kind of get up. Uh, let's go to, see, when you keep on doing, you, you keep on eating. You're going to keep on eating. I keep backing you up to the 29th verse, to the 25th verse. But my whole point is this. You look at the 24th verse, and he talks about it, uh, verse 25. Then man shall say, because thou have forsaken the covenant. We're talking about the oracles and the commandments of God. And he says, they have fathers which have made, uh, the father which he has made them to be brought forth up out of the land of Egypt. Now, let's make sure we get a good understanding of that. Then man shall say, because they have forsaken that went against the covenants of God, the Lord God for their father, which he made with them when he bought them up out of Egypt. Now, we understand that process. Now, the forefathers sinned in ways that they wasn't supposed to say. We know we talk about in the book of Numbers. I'm going to end up getting into a whole nother teaching. I don't want to do that because I want to stay at Psalm 15. But I want to know a basis that in this 25th verse, I mean, when, when, when somebody puts a command on you and they bring you out of something, it's like when somebody do something for you, then you turn around and you cut them down. That's what they did. God sent Moses to bring them up out of Egypt, and he gave them a covenant how they should live and how they should carry themselves before God, that they may live all the days of their life in the goodness of what God has before them, the pleasures. And that's the same thing God has for you. Listen to me in the 26th verse. Then they went to serve other gods. Now, we talk about how uh, uh, one of the services I speak about, how they played God for the harlot. And sometimes we find ourselves in that same situation. We begin to worship things that God never designed us to worship. He only gave it to us for the good pleasure that we be comfortable here on earth. It doesn't matter whether you're making them, bigger than whatever. The Bible declares and decrees in this particular verse, there should be no other gods before him. And whatever you worship more than Christ becomes the God. You shine on your motorcycle, you shine on your car, you shine on your house, whatever. You know, whether you're on Sunday morning planting flowers out front, what do you get out of church and go home and do that? I mean, don't, before you know that thing, then something that happened. Every time you look around something, the water heater them broke, the foundation is messing up, this, that, and yada, yada, the other. When a man begins to please God in the way he accepts him because of what he gave him on earth, because of his obedience, don't neglect the fact. In other words, don't destroy your relationship with Christ. And don't restore the relationship that God gave you in the covenant with your husband and wife. Look, be careful. Be careful. And especially when you don't begin to listen to soothsayers. I call them witches and warlocks who come along because they ain't got nothing and they want to pull you out of what you have. And then when you get out of what you have, then they're going to nana -na 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 you, look at you, and then you're going to look like you got mud on your face. Don't do that. Find yourself staying with God in the midst of whatever your calamity may be, whether it be something that's when you and the husband, you and the kids, whatever. Look, stick it out. Get on your knees at night and pray to God. He said he's a God of the impossibility. Matter of fact, he says the same thing in Jeremiah 32 and 17. 
I, with my stretched out arms, I created the heavens and earth. Now he's talking to you. That when you're going through a proclivity in your life, Lord, you know, I done moved in a whole other direction. That's just where the Holy Ghost do it. When you're going through a proclivity in your life, God says, get down on your knees and begin to talk to me about it. I'm a God that does not change. He says in Jeremiah 32 and 17, is there anything? Can I, can I hear somebody? Is there anything too hard for a God in heaven to do? God has already declared and decreed in your life that he gave you a plan according to Jeremiah 29, 11. What he has for you is you to come under the obedience and the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me get on down here because I'm going to turn this into a whole different subject. And I'm going to end up dealing on something else. And that's just the way the Holy Spirit moves me. I'm just sensitive to the Holy Ghost. And I just do what he's telling me to do. Maybe he took me over for a reason to really help somebody and whatever they're dealing with to get an understanding and realize that you should have no other God before him. That you got to seek you first your kingdom. I mean, your job, your house, your car, your money, your bank account, look, all that. You may get to a point, you start serving that stuff and you want to get more money. Than, and all of a sudden you go to the doctor and him now just give you some bad information about something wrong in your body. Look, don't, don't find yourself in a bad situation. To the point it end up, you have to end up going backwards to what God has declared you to be. There's just a ding, give me time to, you know, Pastor Ellis, you're moving. Apostle, come on, let's get, get moving. But it's, it says over here, excuse me, in the 26th verse, for they went and when they went and served other gods and worshiped them, gods who they knew not and whom they had not given, and the gods that had not given unto them. We talk about how God provided for them in the in the desert on the coming out of the uh, uh, the process out of Egypt. And Moses uh, bought them boys from up there from under Dr. Pharaoh, and he been giving them everything they need. And the Bible says, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the land and brought upon it all curses that are written in the Bible. Now, the Romans taught me, Revelation talks about that. If you disobey anything of the commandments of God, then all these here curses will come upon you. We lived in the book of Revelations. But it says right here, in the root, in the Lord rooted them out. Look, he did. He didn't tell you. He rooted them out. I mean, you dig up a root. Anybody ever had a root canal? I had one. They get all existence of every kind of nerve that can be sensitive to whatever it may be when they do. They get down in that thing, and I mean, they do some work when you get the root canals. Boy, I hate them things. I mean, I had one done. I got to get one done on this coming um, weekend, you know, next weekend. Man, I think I, I'm just thinking about it. It's giving me a psychological effect. It's not that the tooth is bad because they got some stuff they want to do and this, that, and you know, you get kind of the old and you got to take care of your stuff. And this is one of the things they have to do. It's the Lord rooted out. The Lord rooted them out of their land in anger. Look how he rooted them out. It'd be better if they just walked out. But God was so angry with them because they went against him in verse 26. Lord, you got me somewhere else, but I don't know why you got me here, but I believe it's going to help somebody. He rooted them out because of what they deal with in the area of verse 26. They begin to worship other gods. It's the same thing with you in your marriage. It's the same thing with you in your covenant with God. It's the same thing with you in your prayers in the morning. It's the same thing with you when you begin to work back and forth. Wishy-washy, Dr. Jekyll, toe up from the floor up, need to check up from the neck up. And you keep on going on playing the world, and you keep on playing God. And God keep on telling you, look, you can't do this. You can't You can't serve two masters. He's just not talking about mammon, the air man, word for money. He's talking about your pleasures and what you have more pleasure in doing the world than doing to God. Lord, help me. Did I get back over to 115? Slow me down, Holy Ghost. The Bible says he rooted them out of the land in anger. He was angry when they did this. And with wrath... In great indignation, that means that's anger. When somebody gets to the point that they just don't look, they love you, but they don't got nothing to do with you no more until you come around and say you sorry. Am I there? And he cast them out of the land as it is today. They been, look, this thing been going, look at all the wars and rumors that's going on in Syria and all these things that's going on and, and uh, all, all these problems going on in different nations, Syria, Jerusalem, and all this, all this stuff that's going on is a, is a, is a curse because of what the forefathers had done. You're not being obedient to the word of God. The Bible says over here in the book of Deuteronomy 29 and 29, the secret things belong unto the Lord. Our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto what us? It's our wisdom and our knowledge. Our direction is going to help us in the midst of whatever we may be in, in the midst of going through different scripture and information. It's not what a man is telling you; it's what the Holy Ghost is giving you. Let me go back over here to the area of First Corinthians. I'm gonna teach it. I'm gonna put it right there where you where you can get it to. Look what it says over in the book of um, Let's go look at the book of Corinthians, First Corinthians. Let's look at First Corinthians. Let's look at that ninth verse. But it is written that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor they entered in the heart of any man. The things what God, look at what God has prepared for those who love them. 
But God has revealed unto them, look here, by the Spirit. Deuteronomy 29 told you, it's a, it's a spiritual thing. When you begin to understand what Romans 10, 8, 9 saying, what saith thou, the word of God is in thy mouth and in thy heart. The Bible says, if you believe God raised his son from the dead, you can already enter in and having a process of 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. If any man to be in Christ, he is a brand new creature. All old things has and done passed away. And behold, all things have become new. I'm a new man in Christ Jesus. I don't do the things I used to do. I'm walking according to the statutes, the ordinance, and commandments of God. Not what man has given me, but what the Holy Spirit has given me. Go back to what it says about uh, Deuteronomy, well, Psalms 23. I'm going through shadows of the valley of death because now I gave my life to Christ. Romans 10, uh, 8, 9, and 10, and 11. And now the enemy is going to come at me. What is going to come at me? Because he wants me to rebel and go back. So all the things I used to do, I can't fight the resistance to get them because I got to do what? Lean on Christ. The Bible declares the creeds according to what the Proverbs 3 and 5, lean not to your own, but you got to what? You got to get it in your mind. You got to acknowledge. That's what, that's what Romans 12, 1 and 2 says. I beseech you that for brother by the mercies of God. Now, come on, somebody, that you now present your body as a living sacrificial offering. Look how you got to do it. Now, you got to be holy and acceptable. That of at least give me the bare minimum of a reasonable source. That's the mustard seed that's in your life. God said, if you got enough faith as a mustard seed, I want to transform and change you. In the midst of you having problems, you got to go back and understand, Lord, I'm kind of weak. So you got to look at Mark 9 and 23. Mark 9 and 23 talks about the process when a man had the son that was um, demonic possessed. In the midst of Christ dealing with his disciples on that matter, he began to look to the man and the man didn't quite have the faith that he needed and he prodded, he hollered out to God, Lord, help my unbelief that I may believe. You got to get to the point when you can't do it yourself. Am I in there with anybody? You got to believe that Christ can do it for you. When you're weak in what you're doing, believe in Christ, comparing spiritual things to spiritual. That's the word of God, that's what, that's the word of God tell me, John 4, 24. You got to know how to line up things to the point that you can really understand that it's God in the midst in the move of it. Lord, give me more spirit of discernment. Because I'm telling you, man and woman, God, the enemy coming in like a, like a flood. He's coming in and he's got the light to make it seem like that he is God. The Bible says men to be duped and carried away. He goes back over here in the area of the 10th verse of 1 Corinthians in that second chapter. And look at the, the, the 10th verse. But God has revealed unto us by the Spirit. That's that Deuteronomy 29 and 29 we just came off of. He says, searches all things, in the deepest things of who? God. Matthew 6 and 33. When I begin to seek God in the midst of what, Lord, you got me over it. I'm just moving on it. Whenever you begin to seek God. And all that he has in store for you. The word of God said, I will give you that Psalms 84, 11. No good thing will I will hold from those who walk upright. I will back it up and get you to believe and understand and realize according to Numbers 23, 19 to 20. I ain't going to lie to you, but a man will. If you don't understand what you are and whose you are, man, woman, God, you got to come before God. You got to lay down on your knees. You got to concentrate yourself or concentrate yourself. That you may receive accurate information to come from the kingdom. Because he goes down in the 11th verse. Look what it says about the education part. where I just told you about the commentary breakdown. For man knows the things of a man. Stop it right there. Man did the writing of the commentaries and broke it down to what they feel. The Bible was written unto by the power of the Holy Spirit. Who are you going to believe? Even though they write about the events that was in the Bible, about certain things that took place in the Word of God, but it was under their own understanding of what they believe and what they research. But I'm telling you, you ain't got to research the Holy Ghost. The Bible declares when you begin to call on God in the midst of your situation. The Bible says, I'm a very present help. What is that Psalm, what is that Psalm 46? In the present time of need, God will give you what you need. God said, if any man lack the wisdom, let him ask God. He will give them a liver. That's James. God is letting you know that you don't have to depend on man. The Bible says when you be go to kneel yourself before God and realize that whatever it is that's in your heart that you don't understand, the Bible says, ask me and I will give to you. Not with get nothing. I ain't going to sell you no book. You better hear me when I'm talking to you. I'm not going to sell you no book. I'm not going to tell you to send me no offering or anything. That. God said I will give to you freely. Look, it got to be unbridled. That means there's nothing attached to it. Freely given, freely received. If we had times back in the old days, back in the old biblical days, they'd have had to pay money. The baby go see Jesus Christ getting down on the cross, but they'd have made a fee out of it. Come, come, come on. Come on. Come see the lynching of Jesus Christ, the one who's going to save your crazy self out of the stuff that you're in. They'd have put a fee on it and sold a ticket at the gate. Everything now is about the money. If you can't give enough money, then you can't be attached. 
The devil is. Am I in there with anybody? The Bible said everything I gave you to have the secrets. And the Bible said when you get down on your knees and begin to talk to me about whatever is going on in your life, I will but no but by no reason reveal to you that what the Holy Ghost has given me. But first you got to commit yourself unto me that in the midst of you committing yourself that you give yourself that I may use you as a conduit on earth. Am I in there with anybody? God is calling you in the midst of the life that you're in to be a representation of the kingdom of God. Not by name, title, and clicking position. Not because you got a large collar and rings and scratches, all that stuff around you, buildings. God said, I'm going to use you just like I use an Ananias. God got a plan for you. According to Jeremiah 29 11, it's really more than what you can see. The word of God goes on and he talks about how man begins to receive the thing from his educational point of view. In that verse, from that verse 11, uh, that 2 and 11. For man knows the things of a man, save the spirit is in him. In other words, he got to do what we call a first Corinthians, uh, what, a 28? 1120, you got to examine your own self. You're trying to do an MRI on somebody else, do an MRI on your own self. The Bible tells me like this. When you look at Just when you think about this, the basis, how, how, how people put themselves in position of being a little bit more better than everybody else. And I hear the Holy Ghost telling my spirit, he said, tell him, prophet, t- tell him. He said, a man not to think of himself as being more high than he ought to think. But a man need to be sober and humble to God. Then in the midst of when you being more spiritual than the other, you ought to help your brother up. Not because he want to put something in your pocket that you may give him the information he needs that he may live. Because he may just like you. Well, hold on, somebody. The Bible said, when any man think of himself, am I there? Of being something he's not, did he been to deceive himself? Well, how did he deceive himself? The word of God makes it very clear over in the book of Ephesians. For you was quick and when you was what? Dead in your trespasses and sins. When in past times you walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the spirit that working now in the children of disobedience. Oh, you better hear it. Because the Bible said you ain't got out of nothing because you really got to do examination on yourself. Then when you come to another individual and you even look down on them as if they ain't got what it takes to get an overflow from the kingdom of God, you know already violated the principles of God. The Bible said you got to strive peace with all men. In the midst of you striving peace with all men, you are being more spiritual, a little more educated. You ought to help that brother or sister up that's going through changes in their life. Not sit back and mock them and look down on them if they ain't got what it takes. Because that's the one the vibe, that's the one really God's going to use. Remember what the word of God said. I take the foolish things and confound the wise. Come on, somebody. Who would ever believe that God would use a murderer? To write half of the information that we got in the Bible. Am I there? Whoever believed that God would use a man like the name of Ananias, just anybody, just out there, and begin to bless, anoint the man of God, Apostle Paul, to do a greater work in the Bible. Am I there? Who thought what Moses was going to be? Being raised up in the devil's house and then got get separated from the devil's house and then go bring three million plus people up out of Egypt. Am I there? David, a man is out there flocking. I can go on and on to get you to see and understand that the plan that God has for you doesn't supersede by what men see you. You got to believe that the spirit of God is in you. The Bible declares, they told you in Jeremiah 1 and 5, before you was born, created, designed, and engineered. Am I there? God called you to be a prophet before the nation. Oh, you done got to be moving now. I done, something that happened up in here. God is trying to get you to, God is trying to get you to understand in the midst of whatever it may be. When the Bible declares that touch not my anointing, do my prophets no harm, he mean that. God will give you information in your life that will mesmerize you beyond belief. God is trying to get you to see there's really more than what you can see. When they keep on going around putting their mouth on you and talking about you and saying things about you that ain't right, you got to cast all your cares on Christ because he the one that cared for you. Baby, when you got a problem that's going on in your body, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all of his righteousness, the righteousness of God declares the creed that you don't supposed to have any kind of sin morning reigning in your mortal body. Because the Bible says sin is what? Death. And death is not supposed to reign in you. The Bible says when you understand and realize that you're called to be a representative for the kingdom of God, God don't send out tainted ambassadors, especially ones that will represent him. You ever seen a messed up angel? Yeah, there's another messed up angel it's from the devil, but it's not from the one on high. God is trying to get you to see in your life. Then when you go down here in the area in this particular chapter and you're going down how God really speaks in the book of Ephesians, really he takes among whom you also in Ephesians two and three, among whom you also had conversations, your pastime, come on somebody, lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the mind, whereby you are natures and children of wrath, just as others was. Now you go back to the book of first Corinthians, Corinthians makes it very clear, but God has revealed it through the spirit for the spirit, such as all things, yea, the deepest things of God. Now we back in, we back in first Corinthians uh, chapter two and verse 10. Now, he's talking about how you got to receive things through the spirit, 
Not from the education. Now, he done told you already that man knows the things of a man, but no man knows the things of the spirit. The Bible tells me you got to be able to walk in the spirit that you might not feel the lust, the desires, or the thoughts of the flesh. Because man going to always put himself up above what he feel that there's a little bit more better to be more enthusiastic and begin to get the crowd to move the ways that even not by the Holy Ghost. He moved by his education, not by revelation. Because it was, the Bible said that those who worship him will worship him in spirit and truth. But hold on somebody. The Bible says signs, wonders, listen to me, signs, wonders, and miracles of follow those that believe. That means out of the mouth of the apostles, the Bible said they mesmerized the men and women of God. You go back over to the book of Matthew chapter 15, the Bible said that when God came up on the mountain, he looked at the people because of their condition. He had compassion on them. Hold on, somebody. Don't let, don't let, this, don't let this Mark 5 get up out of you. Jesus came up to the out of the gatherings. The power of one man and the ability to bring 5,000 demons to their feet. The Bible declares that when he came over to the island of the gatherings, he looked down and when he stepped foot on the island, that demonic man that was in them tombs ran down to Christ. He said, what I have to do you with Jesus, your most high Lord. Jesus began to ask the man, what is your name? He said his name was Legion, for we are many. Am I in there anywhere? You got to realize and understand, they said a legion, according to the Roman garrison's army, between four and 5,000 or maybe 8,000 men, depending on the region that they fought in. The Bible said one man had the power to bring eight to 9,000 or 5,000 demons to their knees. Matter of fact, that's one of the first times you see the devil begging for his life. It ain't my time yet. Well, get in them pigs if I can shoot you over the top of this mountain. Don't be a pig. Don't be caught up in the oinky oinky and then find yourself running in the wrong direction, straight to the wrong type of slaughter. The Bible declares when you look over here, back in the first Corinthians, in that particular 11 verse, he said, for the man knows the things of the man. That's his writings and understanding his breakdowns. That's what you call commentary. Am I in there? God was saying, according to the book of 1 Corinthians, I will give you an undescribable word. A word that ain't even in the scripture. Am I in there anywhere? That was a word that was prophesied over my life years ago by an Indian guy by the name of John Graham. I was in the sense of a meeting. There was a whole lot of wannabe. I don't know. They called themselves prophets or something. But they began to speak a word. They began to try to shun and deny the work that God has put in me. But that man raised up by the midst of all those devils over there. He said, God said he's going to give you an undescribable word. Man of God, that's why you see me moving like I'm moving today. When I was in the midst of the call and there been a tender root coming up in a land that didn't see right the one to accept me for the work God had done in me a man came out of nowhere God sent an angel through the mouth of that man and that's why you see me moving like I'm moving today because I move strictly by the Holy Ghost you'll never see me move by a whole lot of education break down a whole bunch of Hebrew words this that and the other because the word of God says words are simple and plain that through the power and the revelation and the illumination of God it's all you need the Bible said if I can just believe that all things are possible the Bible says word pack power pack scripture to get you to understand and realize that in your life is really more than what you can see. For I don't want to know the thoughts and the plans that I got for you. They are good and not of evil. God is trying to get you to realize and understand when you cast all your cares on me. I'm the one that cared for you. He goes back over in 1 Corinthians. That second chapter, 11 verse. For a man only knows the things of a man. Look, brother, you got to say the spirit is in you. You dealing with your own self. You got to do an MRI on your own self. Sometimes we got to sit back and do a CSI in our own spirit. What are we talking about? What God's going to do? What do you mean what God's going to do? What God has done is already done. That's why you would have problems in your body. The Bible said, I was wounded. Look at the, look at the inclements now. You got to catch it. You just go through it because you heard it said so many times, but you never looked at the very inclements of what it means. The Bible said, I was wounded for your transgressions. Didn't he say it? I was, listen to what he said, was, past tense, wounded for your transgressions. Move, look, then the chest time of that peace was upon me. And by his stripes, I'm already here. Listen to it again. I was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities, that chastised my pieces upon you. Look, man, in the midst of me being chastised, I held peace, and I never said a word because I knew I was dying for you the day that you may go through the trials and tribulations in your life. Then when you're going through, I want you to realize and understand, I suffered not one thing, but only in the eyes of the ones who did the work on me. But they didn't have no reason to understand because they was absent in their mind. If they knew who they was killing, who they was putting to death, if they knew who I was about to do in the season that I was in. God said, when I go down, I'm going to come up. And when I come up, I'm going to have all power in my hand. Not only that, he said, when I go to the Father, I'm going to leave you a very powerful confidence. And it's going to lead you in all truth. Man and woman, God, you better get yourself together. You better find out what's going on in your life. You better learn how to do a CSI in your own self. Rather than looking at what's going on in somebody else's life. God is trying to give you the wisdom and understanding to know that you got to work out your own soul of salvation. Look back over here in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, in that 11th verse. For what a man knows the things of a man. That's a man. 
that's a man. You want to sum him up? Go over there to Numbers 23, 19 to 21. You talking about how he said he got the Holy Ghost? Jesus declared the creed, according to the 10th verse, I don't move by any man but through the Spirit. But these men right here in the 11th verse were moved by education. And Jesus declared the creed that I'm, in the matter of fact, when you look at Numbers 23, 19 to 21, he said, I'm not a God that I should lie, and not a son of any piece of a flesh, that I got to repent. My command has been given word to go forth, and it will not revert. That's the power of God's word against man's word. But well, who are you going to believe? Man's of the Holy Ghost. Now, let me get to talking about man. Let me get to talking about us men and women. Now, you look at all the prophets and the men and women of God in the Bible, every one of them fell from something. Whether it be with David, Bathsheba, whether it be with the situation with Moses, whether it be in the situation with all, any or Elisha and Elijah, whether it be in the situation with Abraham, all of them had something that they went through in their life to the point they were not totally solid in the word of God. But the Lord of God said, that's one who's coming. Let me go get that son from that man and woman of God over there named Zechariah and that woman by the name of Elizabeth. He got the same problem that Abraham and Sarah had, that even when they was old age, the Bible said, according to Luke 1, that she was unbarren. But then the angel Gabriel came. And I, in my end, anywhere, you got to let a Gabriel come in your life. When your situation seemed to be so impossible that you can't come out of, God will send an angel because of your belief. If you begin to seek God, the Bible said that Zechariah and, and, and Elizabeth walked in the very comforts of God. God. They worked in all the commandments of God. And in their old age, God bought from the very men who was called John, who was going to be the forerunner to announce the word that's going to come out of Mary's stomach, which Gabriel announced the baby in her. And I in there anywhere. The Bible declared that in your life, that you know the plans that God has for you, and he really mean that. You look at how the whole obstacle, all that whole situation went. He first went and dealt with, with Elizabeth, and then when he left Elizabeth, he went over there and tapped on Mary. And Mary, Joseph got all messed up, thought she was out there doing this, that, and the other. And he did the same thing with Sarah and Abraham. I'm going to let you get away. I'm going to let you get to the point where ain't nothing working. I'm going to let you get old in your age. Men and women got who try to push the authority of God. Now, Zechariah, oh Lord, I'm just, Zechariah and Elizabeth never talked to God to the point that they was really upset about because they didn't have a child. But Sarah complained. Abraham complained, and then they tried to push the authority of God through the handmaid. And God said, no, that ain't going to work. I told you it's coming out of you. Let me send these angels down here. And when I send these angels down, they're going to be on their way down to take care of that stuff that's going on over in Gomorrah. And when they come out, they're going to prophesy a word over your life. And they say, by this time next year, that baby going to be here. And they say, Sarah laughed. She wasn't laughing no more. Now, as you begin to get birth in the midnight hour, everything in Abraham came alive. Everything in Sarah began to walk. It began to start working. And see, so whatever happened in that tent that night, am I in there anywhere? It wasn't no Ishmael. It was Isaac that came forth. Am I there? And God began to do some things in their life towards the nations and kingdom. And this is where we are. The Bible declared the creed even of Jesus Christ. To us, what? A child is born and a son is given. He will carry what? The government. Baby, you look, you got to understand something. That because we're going through the calamities, the problems in the White House. Bible tells me it ain't them that can do anything. It's the one that's behind the scene. When you open yourself and expose yourself to demonic forces, they're going to come in and have their way with you. The Bible tells me to resist what? The devil. And he shall flee. The word of God declares over in that book of 1 Corinthians. And I got to get out of here. I know, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I'm going to tap on 115 before we get out of here. I want you to see something in there. But I don't know why the Holy Ghost moved me over here. It's a reason why he took me over here today. And it wasn't because of me, because I let the Holy Spirit use me the way he needed to use me. Not by what the papers I wrote the previous night, because I don't roll off a whole lot of legends. I don't sit there and read out of much. I may have some notes here. But when God says shift, I mean, he says shift. Because God said, I will give you an undescribable word, something that you ain't even wrote or even thought of. You got people who got the papers up there, and they read off these legends and letters. I ain't got nothing. If that's what you want to do, then do it. And that, that tells me a whole lot about you. That God will give you a man like a stallion, a photostatic solid man. That when you begin to engrave the word of God, it's all in your eyelids and all up on your heart. And when the Holy Ghost begins, all right, I signed up a roast somebody today. When he begins to pull it up out of you, you don't need a ledger or a paper or anything. God will let you quote words and scriptures and things that come through the Holy Ghost. Because whatever's in that crowd is going through a change up off in their life. God going to send the Holy Ghost in there and it's going to move according to the spirit. That they may be healed and delivered for whatever's going on in their life. Let me get back over here to 1 Corinthians. Look like I ain't going to even get there. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I want to read that already out. 1 Corinthians, 2nd chapter, 11 verse. For what a man knows the things of a man, save the spirit that was in him. 
save the spirit of the man which is in him. Look what he's saying. Before you try to look upon somebody else, you know, you need to look at yourself. Even so, the things of God knoweth what? No man. Go back to Deuteronomy 29 and 29 and read it again. Secret things. It's going to only be revealed to those who are with Christ. If you're a son or a daughter of Christ and you truly walk by the Holy Spirit, God will reveal things to you. You talk about you walking the prophetic, then we're going to see if it's going to come to pass. You want to have a name for a title and look good and all this, that, the other, but baby, it ain't got nothing to do with that. When God sent forth a prophet, I guarantee you, you're going to know. You're going to know. You're going to know who a prophet. You're going to know what a prophet. It ain't going to be no, it ain't going to be this gadgets. And I'm telling you, when they speak, they ain't going to put no more added on to it. God told me to tell you that he's going to what? Going to do what? God already done it. What do you think the purpose of the cross was? God ain't going to do nothing. It's already been done. The Bible declares, he say, it is finished. A lot of people say, well, God's going to do. What do you mean what he's going to do? He's already done it. What do you think the cross was there for? Jesus told me it's finished. The Bible said, against the lame believer. That's the one you got to have a problem with. Because I'm telling you, when God does a work, he's going to confirm it through the angels. And he's going to confirm it through another voice. And it's going to recognize with your spirit. Now, you know, don't, come up, don't come up over here with that stuff. Because I don't run. I don't do that. I don't deal with that. I believe in nano moves. That means right now. Ain't no later on. It's right now. God moves in authority now. He moves now. Ask the woman with the issue of blood. Ask Brian Bonham and Bayless. Ask the blood, the women, ask the, ask the ten lepers. Ask the two, the three men that were sitting at the gate. You got to understand. You got to look at the prophet. Look at, look at ask Jairus, him and his daughter, what happened. Ask Peter's mother. Look up on that. You got all this stuff going around, and we mesmerizing people because we making them feel good before we call the physical standpoint of view. And you just jumping who round this, that, and the all the other, and then the Holy Ghost ain't moving nowhere, but it's got you excitement. And the Bible said that even when the Word of God falls upon you, it be like the seed that didn't catch root, and then you go back out in the cares of the world. You go right back in the way you used to be, cursing, mad, angry, and all. You ain't got no change in your life. They talking about how you saying when you come in the house, God come as you are. Yeah, you better come as you are. But when the Holy Ghost gets you, you be just like Moses when he went up on that mountain. Something gonna hit you. You ain't gonna dress the same way you used to dress. That old song that told me I went to a meeting one night. Am I there? And my hands begin to look on my feet, begin to, God will change you. Yeah, you may come in there one way, but you won't come back in there the same way. And sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, God, you may not have nothing but your, what you call, I call it your grave clothes, but I'm not putting everybody down negative. The clothes that you wear out in the streets that you try to wear them in the house of God. And that's what it is, grave clothes. Because God trying to get you to come out of those clothes. And the Bible says separate yourself. That when I look at a woman of God, and I look at a woman that's in the streets, I ought to know the difference. Because the woman in the streets, if you got enough power, you can bring the woman in the streets over to Christ and teach them what they need to dress when they come in the house of God. This ain't no, this ain't no talent show. This ain't no click. This ain't no club. This ain't no position. It's about you getting your life, your life together and being transformed and changed. That God may use you. Let me get over to Psalms 115, because this is a Psalms report. The Bible declares in Psalms 115, in the King James Version, he said, he said, not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory for thy mercy and thy truth sake. Wherefore should I hither say, where is now their God? See, this is the people can the mark. This is like a mocking. Read in the Amplified Version, he said, not, he said, not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name, but to your name. Give glory for your mercy, loving kindness, and for the sake of your truth and fulfillment. Look at this second verse. Why should the nation say, where is, why should the nation say, where is their God? In other words, when we as men and women of God are Christians, we shouldn't even have a question about how God blesses us. The people of the world ought to know us, and they ought to know how we walk and who we are. They ought to know us that we now become from among them. All the hotels, all the different that, and all these things out there, restaurants, they should be ours. We, 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 we designed to take over what the devil has. The Bible says in the fourth verse, in the third verse, let me get the third verse. Or this, uh, read it back on the King James verse in the third verse. Let's go back to the third verse over in the book of Psalms 115. And let's look at it very close. I know I'm over my time. But our God is in heaven. 
Now they mocked him over in the second verse. The world should not have to say, where is our God? Because our God clearly shows us that it's us. In the representation of being ambassadors, we show how we live that we are separate to God. The world shouldn't have to say, see, we shouldn't have to look like the world. We shouldn't have to dress like the world. We shouldn't have to do that. Because they're clearly saying, that, okay, where is their God? Their God look like my God. Their members look like my members. That's what the devil said. Their members dress like my members. But the only thing they got, they got a different name, and it's called church. And man, it's called the world. That's it. The man of God should not look like the man of the world. The woman of God should not look like the woman of the world. Now, you can call it judgment if you want to. I'm trying to get you to understand. If you got to throw everything in your closet, then you must do it. Because God is trying to get you to see what is a man to gain, what? This stuff, then to lose his, what? So, I'm trying to talk some real talk to you. There are some people in the house of God that got problems. It's a church that comes in where it's actually housing the sick and the afflicted. And that's the thing that you may come in with spirits on you that has got to be denounced because there's other people in there who's struggling. They deal with pornography. They deal with masturbation. They deal with sexual addictions. They deal with heresies. They deal with lies. And here you come in there, the way the world look, now you can, you can take it the way you want it. And here you come in as a man of God and talking the way the world talk and acting the way the world act. And we ain't been separate from God. And then all of a sudden, those spirits begin to follow us and hang on to us. And then they begin to spread. The old sense they take one monkey. It don't stop no show. But in this case, it will if you be the right kind of monkey. Because it'll stop all the negativity that's coming in the house of God. That when people come to the house of God, say they don't play over there. They may run to some other church. See, a lot of people don't jump on the line and come over here because they know I don't, I don't, I ain't even deal with all that. All that marking and talking and putting people down, all this, all that and the other. I don't deal with that. I'm going to teach you how to walk by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to teach you to get everything that God already had in store for you. Because the word of God tells me no good thing will I hold from those who walk upright. Let me get over to this area of the fourth verse over Psalm 115. Their gods are silver. Because he's telling you, their gods are silver and gold in the works of man's hand. Now, I ain't got to tell you about all that. You should know that by your heart. Look, look at the Amplified Version. Their idols are nations, are silver and gold. The works of whose hand? Man's hands. Look what it says in the fifth verse in the Amplified Version. Matter of fact, let me read it over here. Not in the Amplified Version. Let me read it in the Common English Version, the fifth verse. They have mouths, but they cannot speak. Now, that's what God told them about when they ran over in Israel. They, they, they turned to God. And they begin to come. See, when he's saying that they don't have mouths, they don't speak to the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking just a mere statue. You look at the conversation of a man of God, you look at the conversation of a man of the world. It's totally different. It's totally different. And sometimes I sit in the midst of them, just listen, I don't say nothing. In the midst of they're talking, I'm just praying through the Holy Ghost. Lord, change his mouth. Choke him with the word. Choke her with the word. Just cussing and yabbing and dabbing, just all kinds of ways. And I'm saying, Lord, touch the mouth of that man or that woman right now in the name of Jesus. Would you pray to Christ? No, I ain't got too much to say. I'm not going to say anything. I'm let the Holy Ghost do what he needs to do. But I bet when you go home that night, you know you've been in the presence of some power. It was something about that brother. I don't know what it is about him, but something about him. It may hit you a year later, a month later, three months later. But I'm telling you, my presence is going to recognize. You're going gonna, gonna, gonna to know that I was in your midst. The Bible says in verse 5, they have mouths, but they cannot speak. They have eyes, but they cannot see. Look at it. The mouth will never reveal the things of the kingdom. It always reveals the worldly things. That's the gods of this world. That we walk around and we love the world more than we love Christ. They have eyes, but they cannot see. They ain't got the Holy Spirit no way in the vision. The only thing they look out for them own selves. They have ears, but they cannot hear. Now you go back to First Corinthians, and I'm just I'm just want to make some just clear to you how God makes it very clear to you over in the book of First Corinthians how the idols of this world are opposite what He said over in First Corinthians nine, ten, and eleven. But it is written that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has it entered to the heart of any man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed it unto them by the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, the deepest things of God. Now go back over to the area we just talked about in Psalms 115. And look at it over there in that particular area of the common English Bible in that fifth verse. <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh, they got choke on that. They have, they have, they, they, it says, uh, they have mouth, but they cannot speak. They have eyes, but they cannot see. They have ears, but they cannot hear. They have noses, but they cannot smell. They have hands, but they cannot feel. They have feet, but they cannot walk.
Do y'all understand what he's saying there? It's a revelation to you as being a man, woman, God, that you all learn how to walk upright. Psalm 8411 makes it very clear. That's if I walk upright, there's no good thing but God to hold for me that if I walk upright. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ from Nazareth, I done decreed and declared the word over your people. And I'm asking you, Father God, according to the spirit, that even as you led me through, Father God, I don't know why, but I know you know what you're doing. I command the word of God in the name of Jesus. Then the midst of the hearts of your people, Father God, that this word will roll, Father God, to touch them in ways. Then it'll continue to go them down to the very marrow of their bones. That even in the midst of they receiving the presence, power, and the Holy Spirit, Father God, that everything in their life, Father God, is not like you, you begin to line up and command and declare according to the spirit of the Most High God. Yada behind the Rosh Whatever it may be that's in their body, Father God, it don't seem right, Father God. I'm asking you through the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost. That you begin to line it up, Father God, and let them feel what you feel. That they may know and understand and realize that you are God in heaven. Beside you, there is no other. Let the word be a revealing word in the spirit. And as it begin to move forth, Father God, let it be illumination to their ears and the lamp to their feet. That even when they begin to move, Father God, they will know and understand that the prophets have been in their prayer. Father God, I decree the word, I declare it, I speak it according to the power of the Holy Ghost. And I know, Father God, that no weapon for the against this world shall prosper. And every demonic force and every demon and every family has got to fall to the hands and the work of the mighty God. Father God, I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree and declare that even the woman of God in this house, that you continue to bless her tremendously, Father God. And all her team that follows my hand, I'm asking you to give them anointing and the blessing, Father God, that will mesmerize the mind of any individual. They may know and understand and realize that you are God in heaven. And there be no weapon form created, designed, or engineered against your people. That's your partner. I declare the word, I decree, I speak it according to the Spirit. These things I speak not of myself, but through the power of the Most High God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray, Lord, amen. God bless you guys. I love you. I pray that you guys took time with me to hear what the Word of God has to say through the Spirit. Now, thank you. I know it's a Psalm 15, but God moved me in that other direction. I had to do that power shift, so I had to go where He called me to go. God bless you. God love you. Don't forget, on tonight, we got to actually. Uh, uh, pre-broadcast show coming in for tomorrow. We just we just move here. We just do the work. I want you guys to look out for the little logo I put out for the man of God. He asked me to get some help. And that's the good man of uh, Alan Carter over there in Saginaw, Michigan. The one is the man of uh, Pastor Albright. You know, Doctor Albright. You know, get them together. We got a lot of good teammates out here. A good man out of Canada, Charles Horsnick. and uh, Apostle Oscar Walker. Most of you had him last night. You know, you're dealing with him when a man prays. You know, so we got to believe and declare the creed where he has us in the season we're in. Just humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. When you humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, man, look here. A demon can't pray against you. A devil can't touch you. I don't care how many prophets and priests they say they have. And how many intercessors they may have. When you wait, when your ways please God, the Bible says he will reverse the plan against those who are coming against you. Stay fast, stay, stay alert, stay anointed, and know that God's got a plan for you. It's really more than what you can see. God bless you.